The issue is about the prevention of blindness, early childhood vision screening, and one of the experts that I have here in studio with me is Dr. Mohammed Jafar, and I thank you so much. Uh, you spend a great deal of your time at uh, uh, Washington Children's Hospital, correct? That's correct. Thank you for having us. And 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 this is in association with our good friends with the um, Lions Club. That's and and let, let's 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 give them a, a a little shout out. They they do a magnificent job, do they not? No doubt and about it. And your experience it. with them? No doubt about it. The Lions Club have really been champions in vision prevention, screening for vision issues, and uh, they have now a new uh, endeavor and new program called Kidsight USA where they are recruiting volunteers to uh, check children's between age six months and uh, six years um, uh, using instruments, uh, instrument screening, which are very easy to use and are quite reliable. These instruments have been um, tested both in the field and in the digital offices, and they do a good job. And is this globally or, or just domestically? This, this is mostly domestic, mostly all over mm -hmm. the United States, but not not internationally yet. Let me ask you, when, as you were uh, talking about the work that they've done, you mentioned six months. How does a parent know that there is a vision problem with a six-month-old? If there is a problem in the family, if a, if a family has history of crossed eyes, cataract, glaucoma, that occurs in children, rare, but they occur, these families are a little bit more sensitive to the issue. If they are not, it's very hard for a parent, especially if the defect is only in one eye, uh, like one eye is farsighted, the other eye is normal. The, the parent has no idea, not even the pediatrician will be able to detect that just by looking at the child. If the child's vision is poor bilaterally in both eyes, then of course the child will be stumbling into things, the child will not be attracted by the mother's face, by toys that we all shower our children with. So if the, the, if the vision issue is in both eyes, the parents will notice something. But if the vision issue is only in one eye, uh, they cannot. And this is why we are pushing for those vision screening as early as possible because we really want to detect not only decreased vision in both eyes, but decreased vision in one eye where the other eye is doing yeah. very now, well. My, now my children, and now I'm going through this with my grandchildren, uh, I'm, you know, we've been fortunate, we have insurance, we had good pediatricians, doctors, um, they had the test, you know, that they, that all these, that young children have. Um, is this screening should the screening be mandatory, like any, like all the other screenings that that young children and and parents go through together? The screening should be mandatory, but it's not. It is not by any governmental agency, but now the American Association for Pediatrics has mandated that all children should be screened by the pediatricians in the well baby clinics uh, and in the normal evaluation of children. Starting at what age when it is related we, to vision? Uh, the pediatricians themselves do some examination, like they would look at the red reflex. You know, we, we know that the pupils, if you shine a light in them, will mm -hmm. become red. So the pediatricians, for instance, are trained to look into this very early on as of when the child is born to detect cataract in this instance. Uh, but the pediatricians are encouraged and now they are mandated to have the every child's vision checked between age one year and above uh, to for vision specifically. If the eyes are crossed or anything like this, the pediatrician should be able to detect this uh, earlier. And the criteria and the guidelines go by age. The younger the child, the more loose we are as the child gets older the more specific the, the vision screening is, meaning uh, can the child see 20 over 40 or 20 over 20? The smaller the denominator, the better the vision is. The, the point is uh, 
pediatricians are mandated to do it, but unfortunately, many of them are not. They, yes, because right, yeah. either they are not well trained, their nurses and technicians are not trained to do that, they are short on time, there is so much demand for other issues, like uh, there are families who present to the pediatricians or to the emergency room only if there is a problem. Right. So the right. child is not feeling well. And that's at that stage, you, you can't really spend the time and the child is not going to cooperate for a vision check. And, and uh, let me also re let my audience know that my guest is Dr. Mohammed uh, ja Jafar. Is that correct? Is that the correct this, this, pronunciation? This is very close, or, or Jafar. Jafar. They, all right, let's very, not be close. Let's be accurate. <laughs> no, Jafar, <laughs> got you. Thank you. And, 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 and we're talking about the Prevention of Blindness uh, Society of Metropolitan Washington, but n as a national show, uh, how serious is this issue? Can you speak nationally? How serious is this nationally when it comes to children? It is a national issue. Uh, it is amblyopia, which is a lazy eye, occurs in 3% of children. And, and I remember grandparents, oh, uh, the uh, other generation, they called it lazy eye. Lazy eye is, is the equivalent of amblyopia. Amblyopia is the medical term for right. lazy eye. Lazy eye means that the brain is not able to see adequately with one or two eyes. Uh, the eyes may need glasses, the eyes may need surgery, let's say for cataract, but in spite all of everything we do, the vision is not good because the brain is not able to see. So vision is really in the brain, not only in the eye, or it starts in the mm -hmm. eye, but it's really in the brain. This is where it, it resides. How expensive is, is the treatment? How expensive are the tests? Uh, the tests are really not expensive. I mean, if, if we, you buy a machine or you, you hire people to do the screening and so on, it usually averages around 7 or $8 per child to screen. Uh, we have determined, you know, uh, quality of adjusted year life uh, on how much does it cost to detect amblyopia, a lazy eye, and treat it. And it is around $2,000 per child mm. when it mm. is detected. Uh, and and this is very minimal if we look at other uh, interventions in, uh, in ophthalmology, in the eye world. For a cataract extraction, it costs, it is around 4,000 instead of 2,000. If you are talking about macular degeneration, we're going anywhere between 80,000 and 200,000 dollars of adjusted quality of year life. So it's a huge difference. And the reason why it is so cheap relatively to the uh, adult macular degeneration is that you know you detect it at age three or four and this child is going to live 80, 90, 100 years. It is so important to detect amblyopia even though it's affecting uh, one eye because study after study has shown that if you have a lazy eye, you are three times higher chance to have an eye injury that affects your good eye. Why? Because, you know, you are not as aware, the brain is not as aware of what's happening on that side of the, oh, the face. Oh, I see. So if a child is playing ball or walking or whatever it exactly. might be, I, I, I see. And, and, and these statistics are so important. So even though both eyes are open, for whatever reason, and there are many reasons, there are three times higher chance to affect the good eye than the, mm -hmm. the lazy eye. And half of these, these ish, uh, injuries uh, will get you a vision of lower than 20 over 40. So what's 20 over 40? You can't have an, a, a driver's license, an unrestricted driver's license, if you don't have a bit of vision better than 2040. So it really affects everybody, you know, in day-to-day -day life. It's not, you, it's not a magic word by itself. Dr. Jafar, you know, when I think most parents or, you know, most caretakers of a child, when they get a sense of something's wrong, doesn't it usually start when they're in the classroom? May, you know, I can't see the board, uh, and maybe, or something like that. This is where we were 20, 30 years ago. But now okay. we are in 2020, right. which is a nice thing. 2020 vision, 2020 year, yeah, and so on. Right, right. So we are in 2020. Technology has, has advanced a lot, but also our, our desires and our goals as a society have improved so much. We are, we are shooting for perfection. 
And we're not very far from there. So now in 2020, we have the technology to be able to detect all these things in the pre-verbal child, in the child who may be five or six but cannot read the chart yet right. because right. they have some other dif medical difficulty and so on. So we can detect these issues. And the real reason is the younger the child, the faster the response to treatment is. Ah, well, we, it's and, like and, most things, isn't it, though? But it, definitely you know? in, in the eyes. Uh, the oh, brain, okay. the brain mm. plasticity stops at some point. After age 10, no matter what we do, we, we, we cannot change what the brain vision is. Mm. If, if we detect an issue at age one year, it is much easier, it takes us much shorter time to be able to reverse the abnormality and get it to normal vision than if the child is three or five or seven years. And this is why we're moving all the way down to age one year. Now, one of the reasons I, I also wanted to have you here, uh, Dr. Jafar, is you're working with the Prevention of Blindness Society of Metropolitan Washington, they provide clinics for people with low incomes. And, and, and so here at, at Urban View, I'm certain our audience wants to know, does this issue impact African-American children disproportionately than other groups? Amblyopia affects all, all groups or ethnicities the same. But the issue is, it's not only screening. You screen a child and you tell their parents you need to go and see an eye doctor. Uh, okay? An ophthalmologist. An, an ophthalmologist or an optometrist. Oh, okay, go ahead. The best among the, this hierarchy is yeah. a pediatric ophthalmologist. Because right. pediatric ophthalmologists are trained to examine children and treat children. All but right. we don't have to go to the top of the pyramid every time that a child fails a, fails a vision screening test. So a child who fails a vision screening test needs to be examined by an eye doctor, be it an optometrist, a general ophthalmologist, or a pediatric ophthalmologist. But the point is, there are some families who cannot afford doing that. And, th and we go back now to the African-American uh, society and children. They don't have many at time the same means as a Caucasian family. And this is where the prevention of blindness and this is where the Lions Club come into the effect. This is where the Children Eye Foundation, which is national, uh, started in Washington 50 years ago, but now it's national and actually international. This is where those societies come to the rescue. You know, you screen a child, you tell them to go and see a doctor, and they cannot do it. They will have, you know, the, the resources, they will have the referral guidelines and, and conduits for a child to ultimately make yeah. it to an eye doctor. And if they cannot, they need glasses and they cannot afford the glasses, mm -hmm. the prevention of blindness gives them two pairs of glasses. Ah. In case they they uh, lose one, they, break, they yeah, leave it yeah, at, yeah, at, yeah, the, at the yeah. school or at home because right, they won't, right, don't want to work. Right. So, so these this is where these uh, philanthropic organizations right. come into is, this is why I wanted you on the show we because need, most we, people don't know about and this. we need to close the circle yeah. if, if we screen we feel good but unless the child is seeing we have not achieved anything and if if parents uh, uh, are in that position because I, 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 I go back to what you said you, you screen you examine and then it, the price starts to go up it, you know, as you said, it could be as higher as high as two thousand or more. That's I'm mean, I'm sorry, but that's uh, not sorry, but that's a lot of money for that, for most people. And and as you said, you have to start early. Correct. You have to start early. Um, so how would uh, who should parents contact if if they're in that situation? They want to get the screening. They need the eyeglasses, the correction. Uh, who do they get in touch with? Should they contact the Lions Club? Should they contact uh, the, uh, the uh, pediat their pediatricians? What? I would definitely start with the pediatrician. I mean, the pediatrician okay. is, is the, the home of good health care for children. And hopefully, but, the, and the pediatrician should know about the, the pediatrician the, the, the should know agencies. about that. We, as pediatric ophthalmologists, we as inter, uh, national societies, are uh, informing and instructing the pediatricians and their offices on how to do these things. Having said that, there are children who are going to fall through the cracks. Okay. This is where the prevention of blindness comes in. 
They go to schools. We go to fairs. We, we have special events uh, at the end of the summer before the school start. We are having an event this coming uh, Sunday where children who uh, don't have the means or and don't have the means doesn't mean they don't have the money. The parents, for whatever reason, don't have the time. Both parents are working. Uh, that family has other children who have significant, or, 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 se serious eye, uh, you know, or, or access in the community. Or access, you in know. The I mean, you know. I mean, that's part of the issue too. I mean, as you say, many well-to-do communities may have a doctor, a pediatrician, uh, ax, you know, vision, uh, an ophthalmologist, a, a, a juvenile. But in a lot of poor communities, underserved communities. You've got to go quite a distance to find a doctor. You're right about that. You're right about that. And and this is this is why we need to spread the word. We need to let the parents know that there are resources for them. Okay. The you know again, uh, if they cannot get it through the pediatrician, they can talk to the teachers, to the school nurse, uh, if not to their communities, church, uh, you know, uh, community centers. The, this is where we are trying to figure out what's going on. We started by talking about the, our partnership, uh, even though it is not formal, but it is it is a good partnership with the Lions Club. We are not competing with the Lions Club. The Prevention of Lions is not. The Lions Club is not competing with us. What we both as two organizations are trying to do is to make sure that no school is, is going without being screened. No school children mm -hmm. are going. Um, and this is why we, at the Prevention of Blindness, we have made a decision a couple of years ago is that it, we go to schools, and all what we need from those schools is to know, are your children screened, and if so, by whom? By the school nurse, by the lions, by whoever it is, and if so, that's good. If not, this is where we want to come in. Gotcha. Uh, and and the, the pieces change from one year to another. The school is covered by this, the, that school is covered by that. It doesn't matter as long as we are all covered. We What we'll do, uh, and where's Sam, we'll get this up on our uh, social media. Excellent. Yeah, we'll put the, you know, the, uh, the Prevention of Blindness Society on our social media. And that way, uh, people who are listening. Now, I, I, you, you brought in, even though it's radio, we are... Uh, what what do you call it, Sam? When on Instagram. Instagram. Uh, th these are my social <laughs> media folk. I don't Twitter, know. Facebook, Twitter, Facebook. Twitter, Facebook. But Instagram. So uh, on uh, th this looks like an old Portaroid camera. <laughs> it is, it, 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 this is how it started. What is this? this what is, is this, this that this, you this, have this, in your hand? This, and this, I have to explain to the radio okay. well, listener, you've got a, a device that you're holding in your hand. It looks like a... A, a, a camera, said, a, a, an old Polaroid camera right. for, for those, those those of us who are above oh, thirty enough. or yeah, forty years old. Yeah, Polaroid camera and, is. Right? And and you sit, or the examiner sits. The examiner is most of the time a lay person. The examiner sits around three feet away from the child. Right. And all what the child has to do is to look into the camera. Right. And the camera does the thing. Yeah. And we are done. We have taken your your vision screening, and you are good. Your glasses are good. So we're done. You did it just by talking to you from you when did I, it. I did it. Quick. I did it. So it. I it, didn't even know it didn't hurt. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> You're with a piece of yeah. Nothing Nothing's going to hurt. So if I take wait a minute, if I take my glasses if we, off. Okay, we we have to enter your name and uh, and and yeah. age. Right. And then push a button. Thirty five. No, and I'm just <laughs> and <laughs> let I'm just entering everything and yeah. uh, give me a quick second. And this is all it is. Yeah. And a lay person can, can do this. And a lay person does it. Does it, I see. And all what we can do, okay, I'm, I entered all your information right now. Right. And I am pulling a little bit away and... Hmm. We have this silence. Is where, and, and we have, uh, you know, you moved while I'm I know, I know. And but children I'm, do I'm move getting, too. I'm, but, but the children thing is, moved, but I, I, I do have a reading for you. Okay. You, you, you have some astigmatism and, and your glasses are corrected well. There you go. There we go. Yeah. So, so again, it's that simple. what this machine does yeah. again, is detecting if the child needs glasses in either eye uh, or in one eye, if the child has cataract in one eye or not, if the child has crossed eyes, wandering eyes, and this machine takes it. It's a screening. It, it is not an eye exam. I, I understand. Okay. It's a screening. Okay. All, and so, all, all, and, all, and once you do the screening, 
then what's the next step? The next step is, you, it depends on where we are. If, if we are in a fair, the pet child usually comes with a grandfather or a, or a, or a, or a mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the, that the family member, the guardian, is told that the child needs an eye examination. Okay. And if they say, where, where should we go? Said, well, here is a list where, depending on where they live, uh, at of Talmolos, and, and this is where it yeah. goes. Uh, when we go to school, when the prevention of violence goes to schools, they follow up with the school in a in a in a month, in three months time, to make sure that all those children have gone to see somebody. Okay, when we get the reports back from the ophthalmologist or optometrist, we compare, you know, what the eye doctor have found and what the screen screener has found, and it matches very well. It matches above 95% that the, the exam was correct. The child has cross eyes. The doctor finds that the child has cross eyes. The child sees with both eyes poorly, and the, the eye doctors have seen the same thing. Would the child who goes to the eye doctor necessarily get glasses or surgery or something like this? No. I mean, it depends very much mm -hmm. on what the eye doctor decides with the family. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the point is that a child who fails a vision screen needs to be seen by somebody. Okay. And on children who are older than age three, we are still are de very dependent on the child reading a chart or, uh, or, or okay. whatever. Because yeah. these machines yeah. detect if the child may have poor vision because they may need glasses or something yeah. like that. Right. But they really don't give you the correct thing. They don't say, well, the child should see 20 over 40 or 20 yeah. over 20. But it is, it is so simple. Is I mean, simple. I was just sitting here. It's very simple. My glasses are correcting my astigmatism. And what's that? Astigmatism is a curvature uh, abnormality in the, in the eye. Uh, if uh, you have a lot of astigmatism, you see things distorted. Instead of seeing the basketball yeah, round, you yeah, will see it yeah. oblong like a football. Yeah, people this do is, say I yeah. do see things distorted. Well, I you won't know, ask your <laughs> wife. <laughs> <laughs> they, well, we'll call. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. But and 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 can people also get in touch with the their local Lions Club to get most information? The local Lions Club or the Prevention of Blindness All Society? Right. Because the, you guys are partners. We are we are partners in many ways. Again, we are partners, but not on papers. Well, thank you, and you you, all, you should also know everybody. Doctor Jafar came in and says, "I've never done radio." Are you? Damn good at it. <laughs> so oh, you, you did. Good. You did a great <laughs> job, and 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 I thank you so much. And and this is extremely important information, especially for our community. Um, and and I guess I have, I really should ask: is 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 any of this covered under insurance? Most yes. Vision vision screening by the pediatricians is now covered by insurance. Okay. Local as well as federal government dictate that children need to have vision screening. Uh, we are not asking, physicians are not asking that a child should have a comprehensive eye examination. What we are pushing to have is a screening at an early age. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to add? I've got. I had to get my. I had to get my engineer's attention. Uh, two minutes. I've had two minutes. Anything you want to add? It is extremely important to have good vision at all ages. If we don't see, we are not good members of the society. Pe people have said that vision is so important; is the most important sense. Uh, out of the five senses, uh, we have heard quotes from. People at all ages saying, take years of my life, but give me my vision back. Vision is extremely important. If you don't see well, you're not going to be able to perform well at school, in society, in your profession, and so on. So let's, let's guard it as much as we can. And we have the resources, um, financial and professional, so okay. we, we should do it. Well, I thank you uh, with, and the Prevention of, Fine, of Blindness Society and the Lions for bringing us all together in this important information. Thanks for coming in. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. We'll continue here with Madison the Black Eagle on Urban View.